Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today we're gonna be looking at all of my inking supplies and that should be useful to you if you're participating in Inktober or if you just wanna know what kind of inking supplies I actually have on hand. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic inking adventures begin. Free Skillshare video links, art blogs, Q and A, sketches, deconstructed paintings, video notes, and art gifts are all at a single convenient tier for patrons on Patreon. So today I'm gonna be showing you all of my inking supplies and I don't have that many because they can all fit onto my drawing board at the same time and I would suggest just that you work with what you have at home, which is what I try to do. I try to use up stuff until it runs out. I've had these inks for probably more than a decade. I've had some of these zig markers for a few years. I've had the ink tents for a few years. It does have like a half-life, you know, because they start to dry out. And also for markers, they will dry out if you get too many. When it comes to the dry inks like the Viviva color sheets here, or the ink tents blocks, I actually prefer these because they don't really have a shelf life. You can use them pretty much forever. But without further ado, let's go and look at all the different supplies I have. I'll try to tell you the merits and pitfalls of all of them as I go through them and also show you color swatches. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go over the Viva color sheets first. And I got these as a free sample when they were sending them out to a lot of YouTube art channels, a dry ink that's available in a booklet. And it is a really fun and convenient thing to play with. I don't have very many intact watercolor journals left, but color sheets right here into the side. So that's a really nice option for travel watercoloring if you want something that's super compact because it will fit right into the side of a journal if you want it to. So the colors are really nice and vibrant. I actually have a color wheel. I think there's 16 colors or so currently and they're really nice and vibrant and very fun to play with. Some of the colors are a bit repetitive. These three colors are not the same color. They're different colors, but they look very similar. Same thing for these two reds. Apart from that, the colors are pretty different from each other. It does a really good job of giving a very cool red with a magenta, a true violet, a warm and a cool green, and also a nice mid blue. I do think that it's missing a very cool yellow. Get a little bit of the powder on your hands. They are staining on your fingers and you can wash it off, it's non-toxic. It doesn't lift very well, it is a staining ink if you paint with it. It's not going to be an archival light fast product that lasts forever, but it's perfectly decent for a watercolor journal. I do have some pieces in this journal that I did with the Viviva ink color sheets and that would include this bell piece and you can see that it does bleed somewhat but the colors are really vibrant. So I did this penguin and he's a little bit neon and fluorescent and fading. I also did some Dorian gink pieces with the Viviva color sheets and you can see them in past YouTube videos that I put up. Vibrant and they do great bleedy blooms if you are liking that for a piece. If you don't want it to bleed and you want it to hold a better line then these might not be the best inks to use. So those are the Viviva colors and you can check those out if you're looking for a cheap and convenient fun product. So this is a sign pen and that's the thicker tipped version of these pens from Pentel and I like them because the little fiber tip is easy to really draw with. It is marked as non-toxic as well and it's acid free but it is not waterproof and it's also not going to be light fast or archival because it's not listed anywhere that it is and it's quite cheap. The smaller versions are called Papermate flares and they have a finer fiber tip. And amongst this little mess here, I also have four pens that are gel pens. And these ones are the Pilot G207s. I used to have a whole set with the black, blue, red, and green, but now I only have the red left. All the other ones are used up. It's actually also useful once this runs out completely to use it as a hard point to transfer a sketch if you do your sketches separately before you transfer them to your watercolor paper, which is what I do. I do all my drawing on thin, simple paper before I go to transfer it. I also have a silver gel pen, and these are gel extreme pens, and I have a warmer gold and a cooler gold here. This is a cooler gold, this is a warmer gold, and all three of these colors are really nice for accents on watercolor pieces, especially for holiday pieces or writing inside of a card. So I bought a lot of metallic watercolors earlier this year. I'm not going to replace these pens with more pens now that I have metallic watercolors because I have something that I can use with a brush that can do a fine line or a bigger line. You can check out a video where I show all my metallic and pearl paints. So that's my red in my sign pen and here's my red in my paper mate and this is just a bit cooler than the red in the sign pen. And these are nice pens to do in a coloring book if you just wanna take notes in a notebook. This is what I usually use these pens for is just taking notes and that kind of thing in my planners. In a past video for a previous Inktober piece, 
in an art deco style so they're definitely doable if you're working with coloring books and stuff so it's you know it's up to you what you use them for but i typically use them for notes i'm actually missing a few colors <laughs> i'm missing the fat purple i'm missing the thin blue and those are the two colors that i'm missing so it's not that much of a loss i know where i lost the thin blue one it was at a five guys dirty on the floor of the restaurant and i'm the kind of person where if something like that happens i have to ask myself whether or not I want to retrieve it because it kind of rolled into some dirty thing by the soda machine underneath it. And I was just like, okay, that's it, it's over. That marker is not coming back into my life. Brown would be somewhere around here. I'll just put black and gray right into the center. It's nice that it comes with a gray because sometimes you want a shadow under something. But it is a fun felt tip marker to draw with and to doodle with. It's cheap and easy to find. And if you don't care about something being archival or light fast, then you can definitely use that. I just use for inking outlines. I will show my zigs. And so the very first color I have is just straight on black. And I love these zig writers because they all have two sides and one side is a thick side and one side is a thin side. So here's this fine tip side and it can give you some really fine lines. And if you want an even finer line, I've shown in past videos how you can just swatch some of this ink onto your drawing board and then pick it up with a wet brush and then use that if you want an even finer line, but it's got a nice thick side and then a thin side that you can use. So apart from the dual tip nature of it, I love that this is an acid-free archival pigment ink. And so this is wonderful because it's waterproof, it's got pigment in it, and it's light fast and archival. So it's a great marker to use if you want to have art that you're doing that you don't want the lines to fade comes in many different colors. I only got a few colors that I thought would be useful for me. Ink lines with in ink and wash and ink drawings. So this color is chocolate and this color is coffee. So the coffee is lighter, the chocolate is darker, and this is like a burnt sienna and this one's like a sepia cuttlefish color. And then you've got the black. So these are my three main inking colors. I like to get markers out of a really fine tip so we can do something different than the brush and with actual paintbrushes, use them for drawing lines that are varied with if I'm using a liquid ink. Now this color is a platinum color and the gray here is quite light and you can layer up on it to make it a bit darker, but not by much. It's not really that amenable to getting darker. Anytime I've used it for an ink drawing, anytime I go and add color to it, the ink just disappears because it's about as light as pencil. So you don't want to use it for something like that unless you want your ink lines to disappear, in which case it's a good idea. What it is good for that I've found is that you can put this marker color down as a shadow underneath a flower or an object that you're inking, and it's a great shadow color. So I've got four neutral colors, black, platinum, chocolate, and coffee. And then I've got just a few other colors that came in the pack, and that's red, blue, and green, which is really standard. So I've got a red right here, then I've got a pure blue color. And what I have last is a pure green. How I do inking is I don't use any of these primary colors for most of my inking. I just use these because they came in the pack for notes and such. And then the colors that I use for inking or anything that has to do with painting are my black, gray, and the two browns. And that's all my Zig Writer colors. And I don't feel any need to get any more because I have other ink colors and liquid inks and intense blocks, so I don't really want to waste space getting a ton of markers because markers dry out more quickly and I'm not really my favorite tool. My favorite tool is brushes, so I don't really have any desire to get more than that. But that's a good few basic colors that you could get if you want to do the same kind of stuff that I'm doing. I also have these two markers. They're called the Zig Blender and Tombow ABT marker. And these are both blenders and you can use it to blend a color on cardstock once you put it down. So if that's something that you wanna do, then that's where it'll work. It doesn't work nearly as well on watercolor paper because the watercolor paper, it catches the color and use them on a Bristol or a cardstock and you can blend some of the colors that you have. On cardstock, I can move it and blend it and see that'll work for any of these colors if you have a clear blender and you're using cardstock. If you're good at watercolor blending, then this should be a piece of cake for you because there's way more control here. Um, if you are not good at watercolor blending and you're newer to watercolor, then this might be something that's easier for you to use because there is more control and the water doesn't flow everywhere. I again prefer water because that's how I work is in watercolors, gouache, and liquid inks, but I don't really use these very much. 
It's a cute tool for travel, I think. And remember to clean your blender out before you put it away to get all of the paint out of it, otherwise it's going to end up staining if you have a clear blender. And I should also mention I've got one other marker, and this is an Elegant Writer non-waterproof marker. And it's also not archival, it's dye-based. YouTube video pieces that you can check out that I did with the Elegant Writer. Here's another example. Drew this up with this Elegant Writer, and then I went and added just a damp brush to it, and it gave me all of these sort of bleedy looking cool effects. And I think I used just the tiniest dab of yellow to add in some areas, but all of that pink and the greenish hue and a little bit of that red, that's all coming out of the marker all on its own. I only added a little bit of yellow. This marker is water soluble and it gives you great bleedy, runny, blendy effects if you add a damp brush to it. Okay, so now I wanted to show you my white gel pens. I have the Sakura Jelly Roll. White highlights on something, whether it's a watercolor piece or a gouache piece or an ink piece, you can go back and have some white over the top of it. If you wipe it off before you put it away so it doesn't end up with a dry tip and you close the tip tightly, it should do well. Trying to finish these off before they dry out, but I think once these are gone, I'm probably not gonna get any more and that's because I did buy a Derwent Ink Tense white pencil. And this pencil is just a dry pencil ink and you can put it down dry or you can wet it. And when you wet it and layer it, it comes down quite opaque. Right here you're seeing it come down a little bit less opaque, but that's because it's not wet and it's the first layer. These Alberture Faber-Castell watercolor pencils are really soft and creamy, so you'll get a really nice color deposit with that. So the Jelly Roll is good for a sharp pop of white, and if you want to layer and add more subtlety, then I would use the Inktense white pencil, or I would use a, a white watercolor pencil. So the Derwent is ink and it's waterproof, this is considered a watercolor product because it's a watercolor pencil and it's not waterproof. And then you've got a pastel pencil, which is similar because it's white and you can add some dark white over the top of a piece. This will smear off by hand or when you wet it because it's just pastel, it's like a white chalk. So it's different when you go to buy a white chalk pastel pencil versus a watercolor pencil or a Derwent Inktense pencil. Those are actually wettable products that'll stick to the page much better than a white pastel pencil. So those are my white ink products. Let me show you my liquid inks next. Here's my Winsor & Newton green calligraphy ink. You can see it's a nice grassy green and it's not as strident as the grass green from the Dr. Page Martins, which is why I got it. Like all liquid inks, these can sit around drying out and hardening up and getting thicker and don't store them on their side if you have a drawer where you can't stand them up because the ink will go into the cap and it'll make the cap even harder to open. And trust me, these caps are pretty darn hard to open already. Usually I cannot get them open by myself. So that's something to keep in mind if you have some issues with that, is that liquid inks can be hard to open. I've had these for like a decade and once I run out, I'm not gonna get more. Um, I also have a Winsor & Newton Calligraphy ink in silver and I also have one in gold. The Winsor & Newton inks are listed as being opaque, matte, non-waterproof, and light fast. When it comes to the green, it's listed as being bright, non-waterproof, light fast. And I really like the gold and the silver actually because they're great for accents in a background, on cards, and for holiday pieces. And I used to do a lot of calligraphy when I was younger, so if you do want to do calligraphy with a brush or with a dip nib pen, then these are great for that whether you're using the Winsor & Newton calligraphy inks or the Dr. P.H. Martins. Those are all really nice for calligraphy. So now let me just go through my Dr. P.H. Martins Bombay India inks. They are light fast and waterproof. They're pigmented India inks. They hold good lines and they're non-clogging and non-toxic. I have had clogging issues with these inks if I put them into a dip nib pen or into a cartridge pen. And I've also had issues with uh, them clogging in the bottle. It tends to settle and also clog so I don't know about the clogging part. That part hasn't worked out in my experience. But it is a really nice product that's light, fast, and waterproof. So we'll start with the magenta, which is a very cool red and with a very blue cast to it. So that's down here. And the plain old red is still on the cooler side, which is nice because you can always warm a red up, but it's really hard to get a nice cool red. And then there is a bright red, which has a decidedly elementary school, brightish, almost red-orange color to it. Whereas the bright red very, reads very much as vermilion. The yellow is very much a 
Oriolan type mid yellow. Here's the grass green and the grass green is very grassy and kind of strident. And I would definitely say it's more of a mid green. The Windsor Newton Calligraphy ink green is slightly more olive than the grass green. And the one that's labeled as plain old green has a nice foresty green cooler cast to it. And I've got teal, which is one of my favorite colors. If you know me at all, you know I love the cooler blues and violets and blue greens. So the teal, the violet, and the magenta are my favorite. So this one's definitely gotten more use than some of the other colors. And here's the blue. It's also a lovely peacock blue. It's a very vibrant color. That's the one thing I'll say about these inks is that the colors are super vibrant and gorgeous. I did a Spider-Man piece on YouTube with these inks a few years back and you can see just how beautifully bright and vibrant that works for a, a comic book style piece. They aren't really good for layering underneath watercolors. They have something of an acrylic skin that's in the binder. It makes them a little bit semi-slippery on the surface and they don't layer well and I do discuss that in other videos where I'm using them. So if you want to use them to layer underneath something like for a grisaille or something else and they're not a good idea but if you want to use them as an ink outline then that's fine. We'll have the majority area open for your watercolor. You can definitely use them on top of watercolor, just don't use them underneath if you're going to do a big pass because the watercolor doesn't layer well over it. Then I've got my violet, which is a lovely sort of dioxazine violet type color. Comes with three neutral colors and black being one of them. And if you are doing any kind of ink pieces that are just traditional black ink, then you've got to have a black ink. And this is a very nice, very black India ink. And then I've got a brown ink, which is very much close to a sepia or cuttlefish color, and it works very well, again, for doing inking pieces that are in a sepia style and just on their own. And then I've got the white India ink, and this is great as a sort of fixer or as a highlight placement. You can mix it into the other colors to get pastel shades, so this has aged the most poorly. It's definitely got some city miles on it. All the other colors are much better at staying liquid and not clogging, but this color is definitely very cloggy in the bottle at the bottom, in the dropper, and also when you use it. So that's definitely a problem that this has. And I have added rubbing alcohol to it to try to thin it out and loosen it up and shake it up or stir it, and it doesn't work. So that's definitely a problem color. Those are my Bombay India inks. I hope you enjoyed looking at them. Again, lovely, light, fast, waterproof, pigment-based colors but they do have a little bit of a skin, so don't layer them under watercolors, but you can use them over the top, or you can use them for outlines, or you can use them with other mediums like acrylic or ink tents. So the last of my ink products are my ink tents blocks, and I've shown numerous demos. I have a playlist where you can check out my ink tents blocks being used, and I'll probably continue to add to that because I use limited color schemes, so I don't get all the colors out at the same time, but I'm very happy that I got all 72 colors because I really use this product a lot the more that I use it because it works like a gouache because it's matte and opaque and velvety in its finish, but it does have a lovely waterproof finish when it's dried on the paper. And that's really nice because if you want to do a layered waterproof painting that has a gouache, or oil or acrylic feel to it, then these will help you with that without you actually having to work with acrylic or oil, which might make you sick like they do for me. And also it'll be waterproof, unlike gouache, which I really enjoy. But if I wanna do a piece where I can do multiple layers and these are more effective than gouache because gouache doesn't like layers. And what I do is, is I cut a little bit of a piece of the various colors into a palette and then use them like paint from there. Now, even though these are waterproof on the actual paper, once they dry, if they're completely made wet, they are reconstitutable and reusable from a palette, which is really magic because you can't reuse oil or acrylic once it dries, but you can reuse these colors once they dry in a palette. So that's amazing because there's no waste at all. The various light fastness that's at six plus, a lot of these are six, sevens, and eights. Some people have argued once you dilute these that they do become less light fast, but they're still decently light fast, especially if you use them opaque, they will pile up and become more light fast. From what I've seen on other people's reviews online, it's usually the cooler reds and some of the purples that fade more with a six month window test. And, and I'm not gonna go through all the colors that I have here uh, one by one because there's just too many of them. But if you're a patron, you can check out this wheel on one of my posts. And also you can look at the swatches and the names if you pause the video. And I'm sure there's lots of places online where you can see these too. But these are by and far my favorite product of ink right now because you can reconstitute it in a palette. It doesn't have a shelf life because it's not liquid. It's not a hard to open bottle and it's not a marker that'll dry out. 
and it works like gouache and you can make it go opaque or transparent and it works great underneath watercolor. So they also come in pencils, but I like the blocks better because there's no waste and I can put them in a palette and I use them like paint. So that's up to you how you wanna use them. I only have a white in a pencil form. Everything else I have with the ink tenses are in these blocks. I tend to stick to watercolor in a watercolor piece and stick to ink tense in an ink tense piece because I do have staining watercolors that don't need that kind of help. But if you don't have staining watercolors that will work well for a grisaille and you happen to have some ink tense blocks then go ahead and use them for that. They're really good for grisaille as well. Well, Wizards, hope you enjoyed me going through all of my inking supplies and that I've given you some ideas. Again, I would encourage you to use what you have. I try not to fall under any kind of pressure to go out and buy stuff. I've had a lot of my things for several years, some of them more than a decade. I think once you have the mediums that you wanna work in, some watercolor, some gouache, some ink, that you go and try to use those up before you get a whole room full of them. I don't find it very productive for myself to have so many supplies that I can't see. So I limit myself to having just a small art tabaret of supplies and try not to overflow much out of that tabaret because then I can't find my supplies. It becomes stressful to try to use them before they expire or to find them. And just looking at them makes me feel stressed out because I feel like I've spent a lot of money on things and I'm not using them. I like to be a creative minimalist with how I get my stuff. I think that's better for the environment it's better for your productivity and it's better for your wallet. So that's my two cents right there. It's up to you if you take it or not. Well, at any rate, I hope you enjoyed my video and please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website link, Skillshare, and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all epic inky adventures.